And then uh, about five years into that, oh good, my my recorder's in here now. Hopefully we'll get a good recording of this. Uh, about five years into that, I started getting into real estate investing because um, I was just doing a little thing on the side, flipping houses. I kind of, I took one of those, you know, learn how to do real estate courses. It came in, it came on uh, VHS tapes, I think back then. <laughs> But uh, so I, I got one of those courses and I and I gave it a try in my first transaction of buying a fixer upper, fixing up and selling it. I made a good amount of money, a good chunk of money. It's about twenty thousand dollars. And, um, you know, that frankly was more than I made in in commissions that whole year. So I was like, this is kind of fun. And and then I got more and more into the real estate investing and 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 I was and. Tanya was handling, my wife was handling the, the agency just fine. And so I had a lot of flexibility to do that. And to the point where I started getting, you know, friends and family involved. And I started an organization I called, uh, well, it was FM25, but it was Friends and Family Millionaires to the Power of 25. That was the logo. And we thought if we all invest $10,000 together in, I think it was like 15 years, that should uh double several times over and become a million dollars like if we all came in with ten thousand each and and then ended up with a million dollars each from our share of the llc that we formed for that uh that would be pretty cool and and so i i started uh real estate investing with uh with some partners and and some pool of investors so i was responsible for and i did that two times so i was responsible for two groups uh, that added up to half a million dollars and, you know, it's just started doing the same thing I was doing on my own. And uh, right around that time is when the real estate market started going down and, and, uh, and that really sucked because not only did I struggle with my own finances, I was all my closest friends and family who put their trust in me. And uh, I had a partner also, but they put their trust in me and uh and i and i failed them and it was horrible um so uh but at at the height of everything i was successful i had you know tiny and i had 10 properties under our own name we were living in our dream home with the white picket fence and two cats in the yard and all that whole thing we had our, <laughs> our second child was born uh, so we had the American dream, all the success that you can think of, vacations and, you know, all the stuff. Uh, so I thought, so I thought that was success in my mind up to that point. But when everything crashed and burned with the, with the real estate crash and the economy changed and fast forward to 2010, I was, um, I had a bunch of foreclosures, short sales, a bankruptcy. We actually did everything we could to pay off all of our debts. We took care of our, our families, our friends and family. Um, but then this weird lawsuit came out of nowhere. It was totally frivolous. It was somebody, um, after the house was sold to them, they, they ripped the linoleum floor and they said that it caused them stress and, um, uh, what they called, uh, it activated their PTSD. And so they sued everyone, the title company, the mortgage company, the realtor. And I was a part of that transaction. So I was on, so I had to, I had to, after I paid for all these debts, I still had to do bankruptcy just to not, cause I had nothing left to fight a lawsuit. So anyway, so I had all that. And uh, so all that to say, it was painful. It was hard. I'm sure you guys can relate. Have you guys had times where you know you hit success and then it didn't last is any anybody relating to me here um wow what a story <laughs> nothing quite like that but um definitely hit those those kpis and just feeling okay now what having a hard time to yeah. celebrate those wins it's always about what's next and how can you do it better and then when you hit those goals it's the same feeling of like more more next next so very curious to hear more about gratitude in the present moment and how to to maximize that yeah thank you maria anything anything from you jody um similar to what maria is talking about however i recognize living it twice 
So um, first in my imagination, and then when it shows up in the physical. <laughs> and so through my learnings and through my awarenesses, I understand now what that means and how that feels. Mm -hmm. And it's not chasing the next thing. For me, it's unfolding of me for the next level. Mm -hmm. Love that. Well, uh, so the rest of the story, uh, I call it my wilderness experience, my wilderness time that lasted from about 20, 2009 to 2012. And 2012 was when I had what my brand is now called Awakened Life. It, it's, it's because of what happened in 2012. I had my awakening. And uh, what that means is like you become fully aware, you be become fully conscious, you become fully present. You all of a sudden you feel like the scales have come off your eyes and you're seeing what you never saw before. I love the movie, The Matrix. It's like that. You're like, all of a sudden you're like Neo and you're like seeing the matrix and you're seeing the bullets and you're just like, oh, these have no effect on me. And you're just seeing things for the first time. That was uh, what happened to me in 2012. And I had an epiphany. I had a revelation. And that's what I now call the four pillars of fulfillment. I've spent the last 10 years uh, with my clients, coaching clients and business owners and uh, people working on relationships, uh, teaching them this foundational principle. So that's what I'm going to got my whiteboard out to kind of uh, go over it with you. And uh, it starts with it starts with a very important word, uh, which is impact. Uh, you know, uh, and can you guys see that? Okay, is it showing up? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, Tony Robbins has the six human needs, and we have four basic needs and two higher levels, more spiritual needs, more fulfillment needs, which are growth and contribution. Every human on the planet needs certainty, uncertainty, significance, and connection. But not everybody has fulfillment from growth and contribution. And that's that's another uh, way of saying impact. What is the thing? I, I, I know you guys uh, enough to know that uh, that you do business and life because you want to make an impact. You want, you're not just doing business for to make money. That's where I used to be, by the way, uh, to, 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 uh, it, it wasn't on purpose. Like I thought I was doing good things, but it wasn't really in line. I mostly was, my goals were pretty much material goals at that time. Now I make sure my goals are purpose aligned. And if I make money, great. You do need an economic engine in your in your goal setting, but if it's about how does this make an impact uh, to something that is near and dear to my heart? Uh, for me, my my impact uh, goal is around um, I'm I'm I want to I want to be a help to society. My my help for society is I impact families. I I'm uh, an expert in relationships and help um, parents and uh, husbands and wives have great families and build that solid foundation. And my my clients tend to be business owners, so you know I, I see those that combination of things. If uh, if I can help one family at a time uh, change the course of their family tree, I'm making an impact to, to something that's very important to me. I, I look at the the problems of the world and I see that uh, that might be the core issue. That's at least the one that I'm called to. Uh, w what about you guys? Do you guys know that clearly what your, what maybe your calling is, what you're called to, what that purpose is, what impact you're making? What do you got, Maria? Uh, interestingly enough, I just had a meeting about this before hopping in this webinar, so I've got a crystal clear answer. Cool. <laughs> yeah, I would say it's to deliver happiness. Uh, at the core of it all. And I think that all of the the types of work that we do, they're just avenues for people to be happier, for them to love what they do, for them to enjoy their work, for them to feel fulfilled. Um, and mm -hmm. I think that if you were able to make one individual or a company or even a country happier, then for me, mm -hmm. that's the most purposeful thing I could do with my time. That's awesome. Great answer. Uh, I love Jody, how do you have something? I do. I love how we're all connected here today. Um, fulfillment, mm. joy, happiness, laughter. Um, for me, it's conversations. It's guiding people to speak differently based on their frequency. Mm. So, uh, and so that. it's conversations with yourself, with others, business, life, mm. 
relationships. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah, if I had to boil mine down to one word, um, I did this exercise um, from Mike McCulloch's. Uh, he calls it the queen bee role. Like, what's the what's the role that the beehive has that you know is essential? Which is the queen bee laying eggs, right? So if you know what your queen bee role is for your life or your business, mine is. I realized through that process that mine is motivation. If I had to boil it down to one word, but my my thing, if I'm not motivating people towards their goals, then I don't have a business, right? That's my queen bee role. Well, good. Well, Jody, you actually uh, uh, alluded to something that uh, brings me to the next pillar, which is freedom. Uh, you know, freedom involves a lot of things, but if you want to make an impact, you have to have the freedom to do it. Financial freedom, location freedom, time freedom, like without, imagine a life and a business without hindrances so that you can make the biggest impact you possibly can make on this planet with your finite time that you have on it, right? Uh, when it comes to uh, really mastering that pillar uh, of freedom, uh, the key thing, like you, like you said, Joda, it, it, well, you didn't say these exact words, but it, it's about being aware of self and others, right? It's, it's having a fully conscious present, you know, awareness is so powerful. Most people, I think, walk around a great percentage of the population on planet Earth is walking around like dead dog asleep, zombie-like state. They, you know, they're Groundhog Day. But if we can be uh, aware of, it starts with self, right? Like, you know, that that uh, that thing that Jesus said about, you know, you're worried about the speck in someone else's eye when you have a plank in your eye. What he's saying there is, like, you see everybody else's problems, but you're the one with the problem. So it starts with the self-awareness and, and you can't see clearly what's going on around you. And, uh, and this is really powerful for relationships, but, but, you know, when it comes to breaking free from anything that's holding you back, that's really the core of freedom. And um, you really have to start with self-awareness. And, and I, I know that you, you both have done a lot of work there. Jody, what, what are you thinking there when, when I bring up that pillar? Um, for sure, freedom, self-awareness, and discipline. Mm -hmm. Self-discipline? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, routines and, um, uh, I don't know, morning routines, evening routines. Uh, Mike, the Miracle Morning has the, the, the SAVERS acronym, doing a, a routine that helps you have that self-discipline. Do you have like a specific morning routine? Are you asking me specifically? Mm -hmm. Yes, I do. Mm -hmm. yeah. okay, and it's good. not just and it's not just morning. It's throughout my day, all the way to sleep. Ah, love that! Wow, I'll have to learn about that from you when we have our one-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Maria, do you have something to add to that? No, I'm just curious to know what Jody's routine is. <laughs> I know. You're going to have to schedule a one-on-one -on -one with her. <laughs> I will. I will. It seems like it. All right. Awesome. So the next pillar is relationships. Relationships. Uh, and this is something that I've learned. And you can, the, the order of these is important because this is sort of the pinnacle, right? But in order to have that, we need that. In order to have that, we need that. And there's one more. But one thing I learned is uh, if you don't have your relationships intact, you can forget about the rest of it like that. That will make or break you. So relationships are that important where it's its own pillar. And I have made it my uh, obsession to understand. Uh, I call it relationship intelligence um, where, you know, uh, it, it requires communication skills. Um, I, I really, you know, a big breakthrough for me was Tony Robbins' Six Human Needs. And it really, you only need the four pillars of, of or sorry, the four basic needs, certainty, uncertainty, significance, and connection. If you can really understand all human behavior becomes comes from trying to meet at least one of those needs, usually more than one at a time, uh, that's really helpful. Uh, and that's just one piece of like mastering the relationship pillar. 
Um, but again, it's, uh, it comes from, I don't know, I, I guess, uh, again, I, I love another thing that Jesus said, like, love, love your neighbor as yourself, right? I mean, that's really what it comes down to. There, there's a lot of problems with relationships and uh, human interaction in the world. And a lot of it becomes, comes from, we're not loving our neighbor very well. We're not loving our fellow man very well. And honestly, we're, we're not doing that because we're not loving ourselves well. So it starts with the relationship with self. And again, kind of like the, um, the idea of like self-awareness and self-discipline. So uh, let's move to the last one. The, the foundational one is vitality. And uh, I can't remember his name, but the, the guy brought it up on the, on the, on the group today that, um, you know, if you don't have your relationships intact, it's hard to do these things. But if you don't have the energy and the uh, vitality and the, uh, the everything that goes with that, right, you've got to have your health dialed in. And this is so important when it comes to routines as well. Uh, but there are things that you can do, you know, sleep, nutrition, uh, but it's really about kind of energy management. Relationships, good relationships, good freedom, good impact, all requires a ton of energy, a stamina, and um, the ability to just like walk it out. And um, yeah, yeah. Any thoughts on that, guys? I think that's so important and something that can so easily get overlooked if you're a small business owner or an entrepreneur or in any sort of management position where you feel the sole responsibility to handle operations and people. It's very easy to lose sight of your own health and well-being all the while trying to ensure that the people you're managing experience the same. So uh, I think that's that's really important. And now that we're, I think, generally coming out of this uh, grind culture where you sacrifice everything for success and sit behind a computer screen. And it's really nice to see people taking a step and understanding that a holistic and balanced life will be far more productive and fruitful, uh, both short and long term. Um, so I think that's that's a really key point and it's especially pertinent now. Wow, that's really well said. I love that. Um, yeah, so so good. And anything else, Jody? That's my business. Tell, tell I, uh, me more. I uh, energetically balance people. That's so cool. Wow. Yes. Amazing. Okay, we'll have to connect well, we with got... LinkedIn. I have some questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, so we we're my, mind, bo so we're mind body, we're mind, body, spirit. And most coaches mm -hmm. focus in on mind and body. I focus on the spirit. That's amazing. Nice. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that's Cause, so cool. Because like you said, Maria, you know, most people were hustling and grinding and burning themselves out. For what? Absolutely. For what? And then Scott, you also hit on it as well. You know, you have all the success and you're not feeling fulfilled. How come? Mm -hmm. so. That's definitely. Yeah. That's awesome. That's so needed. Wow. Thank you. Oh, Jody, I'm looking forward to chatting with you. I, uh, <laughs> I have so many questions that uh, can't be asked only in, in the minute that we have left. So, Scott, any final thoughts? I don't want to commandeer. Yeah, it's um, it, it really comes down to, uh, and you probably can totally relate to this, Jody. But I, I mean, I I have business owners that are coming to me for um, all sorts of practical problems, and their, uh, you know, financial goals aren't being met, um, you know, marketing, whatever, and and they're sometimes surprised to hear from me that okay, well, we're going to start with vitality. And that was part of the reason I had to create this four pillars of fulfillment and put vitality as the big one at the bottom, because as you were saying, Jody, I mean, you both said this, like, if you don't have that, forget about the rest. So I invariably am talking to them about their morning routine, like, you know, even if you have to get up a little bit earlier, uh, you know, they're like, I, I can't get up any earlier. If their morning routine is not going well, then, you know, there's a, a ROI to um, to being able to get up like 20, 30 minutes earlier and having a morning routine that you didn't have before. Yeah. Anything to add to that, Jody? I just love what you said. It's building that morning routine. And what 
I also like to talk to people about is it starts the night before setting yourself up the night before with your thoughts. Yes. 